Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed and glad for this opportunity to bring God's truth to you. Can we just pray? Father, we bless you today. Miracles are taking place even now. As your word comes forth, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, I, I am seeing someone. You have a problem with your leg. There's something like a sore on your leg. And as, as I was just praying, I saw an angel standing by you. And, he, and see that angel is touching that leg right now. Be healed. I command that soul to dry up from its roots. And let the healing in your body be restored in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I also come against diabetes. I speak against diabetes right now. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is well with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, if you are sick and you're watching me right now, it's time to receive your healing. It's time to receive your healing. Just lift up your hands and say, Lord, right now, I receive my healing. Yeah, go ahead and say it. Say, I receive my healing right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Man. Now you can just check yourself, check your body, check what you couldn't do before and just, just you know, demonstrate something you couldn't do before and you realize you are healed, praise God. And then you can send in your testimonies and tell us what great thing God has done for you, praise God. Now, as I was praying, I saw something that I would like to talk about, but then there's something again here that we were talking about yesterday that I need to finish up. Praise God. And I trust God for grace, you know. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, so I showed you something yesterday. I said, we read two scriptures yesterday. The first one says, Jesus said, I will send my angels. And they will gather the elect from the four corners of the earth. From the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of heaven. He said, oh, they will gather the elect. Then we also read in Matthew chapter 13 where Jesus was talking about the good seed and the task. And he, he spoke and said, I will send my angels and they will gather out of my kingdom everything that causes offense. No, 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 everything that is not righteous. They will gather it out of the kingdom. And I asked yesterday, how will they know? And then I went further to describe how, just like in the days of Egypt. When God told the children of Israel, the night the death angel was going to pass through, he gave them instruction through Moses and told them, tonight stay indoors, don't come out because something is going to happen tonight. And it is for the Egyptians. Their firstborn is going to die. But for you, in order not to, be, in order not to fall victims, stay indoors. And I was using that to explain something to you. When the rapture is going to take place, everyone that is going to go by the rapture will be at the right place at the right time. Some people don't believe in the rapture. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. Let me tell you this. Even the scripture we just said tells you something. The angels will gather the elect from where and to where. See? He's gathering them up. Now, I said something yesterday. No prophet of God will be given these assignments. No one. No one is qualified for this assignment. This is purely a work from the Spirit of God and the angels. Now listen. How will the angels recognize those that are the elect of God? 
through their words. Through their words. So what do you mean their words? The Holy Spirit will put words in their mouth. This is not, this is not a time where we're going to put blood on our doorpost. Nah. <laughs> this time around, every man will stand for himself. Yeah, every man will stand for himself. Nobody is going to tell you, let's gather in church on Friday. Something is going to happen. Nah. See, everybody will hear the voice of God for himself. So that's why I tell people, if you don't hear the voice of God, I, I wonder, how then do you even say you're a Christian? How do you claim to be a Christian and then you don't hear the voice of God? If you are not convinced you hear the voice of God, you have a big problem. You are not really a Christian. Say, why, why would you say, oh, oh, it's the truth. What did Jesus and my sheep hear my voice? My sheep hear my voice. The characteristics of my sheep is that they hear my voice. So, okay, I don't hear his voice. What does that mean? You are not his sheep. But you know, th this is the truth now. So you don't start condemning yourself. The problem most times is not about God speaking. The problem most times is you not recognizing his voice. You hear, but you don't recognize. And because you don't recognize, the reason you don't recognize is simply because you don't pay attention to it. And when you, pay at, when you don't pay attention to it, even though he's speaking, you will know you're hearing him. But you do hear him. You hear him. That's if you're a sheep. I'm not saying everybody hear the voice of God. Nah, that's not true. That's not true. Now listen, John chapter 8 and verse 43. Jesus speaking, he says, why do you not understand my speech? He said, because you, do not, you are not able to listen to my word. Why? He says, you are of your father, the devil, and the desire of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Did you see that? Now, Jesus was speaking and he's talking to these Pharisees and say, hey, why don't you understand my speech? He says, because you do not hear my words. Now, actually, he says, you do not listen to my words. Actually, you don't hear my voice. That's what it means. Meanwhile, in John chapter 10, Jesus expressed this, said, my sheep hear my voice. So, as a child of God, if you don't hear the voice of God, you have a big problem. And you need to, you need to pay attention to listening to the voice of God. I always tell you this. Samuel didn't need anybody to pray for him to begin to hear God. No. But he needed instruction to recognize and acknowledge the voice of God. So, because God was already speaking to him. He was hearing his name, Samuel, Samuel. Then he would run to Eli because he was never thought that God could speak to you. And that's the same problem a lot of people have. They have never been taught that God can speak to you. So even when they hear the voice of God, you find them say, oh, something was telling me, something told me, see? Or oh, I had an intuition to do it like this. No, it wasn't an intuition. See, it wasn't an intuition. Now you need to start paying attention to that voice. You need to start paying attention. And then that's one number one. Number two, you need to start acknowledging that voice. Acknowledge that voice. That's, that's all um, Eli taught Samuel to do. He taught him to acknowledge. See, he says, when you hear that voice again, respond like this. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. That's exactly what Sam, um, Eli taught Samuel to do. Now, when Samuel did that, God began to speak to him. Now, why am I sharing all this with you? Because 
when God sent his angels, when Jesus sends his angels to gather all his elects, how are they going to know the elect? By their words. That's why I keep telling you, listen, there are angels all around you. There are angels all around you. How do they know the sons of God? See, the Bible said the endless expectation of the creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, there are angels already down here to assist you in your manifestation. But guess what? It will not happen until you begin to speak right. Now, how do you speak right? When you speak words given to you by the Holy Spirit. See? So, we're the same thing. When angels are looking for the people who cause offense, it is by their words you will know them. So you find yourself, oh, this guy, he's born again, but his mouth is full of dirt. Foul, foul. Anytime he opens his mouth, he's either telling a lie or he's saying, saying something rubbish. Hey, watch that guy. He's not saved. He's not saved. So I say, ah, no, no, no. We went out together for the altar call. You go out for the altar call doesn't mean you're saved. So that's one mistake people make. Who does salvation? It's the Holy Spirit that does salvation. It's not the pastor that does salvation. The pastor will preach, but it's the Holy Spirit that saves. That's why Jesus told the disciples in Mark chapter 16. He says, look, when you go preach, anyone who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Listen, the believing comes from them. The baptism comes from the Holy Spirit. He wasn't talking about water baptism, mind you. Nah, he wasn't talking about water baptism. So he's saying anyone who believes and gets baptized, you know the salvation has come to that person. So when you preach to people, you look out for them believing. Now how are you going to know they believe when they get baptized? Who does the baptism? The Holy Spirit. So when we go preaching, that's why the Bible says, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them, confirming their words with signs following. Now, many people think that was talking about, oh, we go, we preach, we see the sick, we heal them. Those are the signs that are following. No, sir. No, Jesus said something to them. Look at that scripture. Sometimes just read scriptures in context. In context sorry. Now he says, he says, as you go preaching, anyone who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Right? Okay. So, and then he now says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak in tongues. They will take up supper. If they drink any daily thing, it shall not hurt them. All right? So now then, he says, and after that instruction, and then they obeyed the Lord, and they began to go preaching everywhere. And the Lord was walking with them. What was the Lord doing? The Lord was confirming their preaching with signs. What signs? The signs that Jesus spoke about. Are you getting what I'm saying? So while they went preaching, things were happening. People were getting saved. How do you know they were getting saved? Because they were seeing signs. Peter went to Cornelius' house. And while he was yet preaching, the Holy Ghost fell on the people. They began to speak with tongues. Yeah. Paul met certain people. Do you believe the Holy Have you received the Holy Ghost since you? Oh, we don't even know the Holy Ghost. Well, you know, what, what do you mean then? Then he spoke about Christ to them and laid hands on them. And then they began to speak. You know, what was that? Signs following. Signs following. See? So it's not the preacher that is doing the signs. It is the Holy Spirit that is doing the signs in the people. Now, for example, Peter didn't touch anybody. He didn't even say to them, receive the Holy Ghost. He was just preaching. The people's hearts were open. They were listening to him and they believed. And when they believed what happened, they were baptized. That's what happened. Same thing today as we go out preaching. The Holy Spirit is there to confirm. So if the Holy Spirit has not confirmed salvation in your life yet, I'm sorry to tell you this. You are not saved. Because my time is up today. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Listen, you are blessed. And God is taking charge of your going today. And you will experience great things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.